really interesting question come up on the list that required doing some interesting development. I thought I would um, talk about what the outcome is. So um, the question was, uh, so can't do that. the question was specifically, um, has anybody done um, a translation from uh, the um, Homosaurus vocabulary to mark for authority records? Um, the database here um, has created the vocabularies and linked data. Um, they provide um, essentially a handful of different um, formats. Uh, it looks like intervals, JSON, LD, uh, Turtle, and CSV. So by default, um, the program does have the ability to uh, mark edit if you wanted to take all of these um, vocabulary elements and turn them into a mark record. Um, you could download uh, the CSV file. Um, you could review the content that's there. Um, and you could build a mapping um, using mark edits, the limited text translator um, to translate um, the data here into mark records. The problem is they're not super clean. Um, not all the data here um, looks like it's well represented in um, the tool, but uh, in terms of particularly um, broader and narrower terms. Um, but there are a lot of stuff here. Uh, yeah, so you've got some, um, but the problem is that these terms here, broader and narrower, they have multiple terms and things like this are gonna be difficult to do in the delimited translator, the breaking them apart. You'd have to do additional processing on the other end. But that's an option. Um, the option I originally thought was that you could just take the JSON-LD um, and translate the data uh, directly into um, MarkEdit. Because MarkEdit has a, um, a translator, uh, a JSON translation tool. Um, so my original thought was you could take um, uh, the JSON LD, which is stored here, um, and use the uh, uh, the wizard here um, to go ahead and process that data. Um, if you were to try and do this um, in the current version of MarkEdit, though, you'd find that the data doesn't work, and there's a reason for that. So MarkEdit was developed um, to work with JSON data. Uh, JSON LD actually looks quite a bit different, um, and it's partly because of the uh, attributes that are used um, in order to pull data. And so um, the new, I made some updates so that you could pull um, the attributes appropriately and bring them in, um, select the root element, bring them in, so that way you could uh, preview the document. Um, the problem with that is that the profiler assumes that the record that you use as the example is pretty much generally the kind of record that you're using because what it does is it translates the record into um, an XML concept map and then it uses kind of the, it essentially maps uh, XML elements to positional locations. So that way when it comes back and it sees records like it the same it can essentially, without having to know a lot about the records or schemas or anything like that, it can map the data. The problem is these things here, the narrower, the broader terms, the related terms, they don't, there's not gonna be the same number in every record. And so that conceptually makes that very difficult for the, the tool to work with. So um, it got me thinking about um, how you could start putting pieces together um, that are in the tool in order to make something like this work. So um, inside the tool, there's um, been for a while um, in the translation tool, there's been for a while um, a JSON to mark, uh, which is taking um, kind of an agreed upon JSON format that we use in libraries and translating to mark, um, and then taking XML data and outputting it as JSON. But there hasn't been a raw taking JSON to just flat mark. And so 
um, I thought that would be a good addition. So what I did is I added that so um, we can see um, if I go and grab a JSON file I downloaded. Um, you can take one of the JSON files and uh, translate it as, as XML. And see the result. And so let me go ahead and expand this so it's easier for you to see. Uh, do, do, do. All right, so it takes the JSON LD and it flat it, it reconceptualizes as an XML file. Now this is easier to work with. There are um, some caveats, and I'll get to those in a minute. But this is actually easier than to work with within the current market at structure, which is built around being able to translate data from one format to another. Bringing that into um, an XML format now makes this possible. So then it's just putting uh, pieces together. So we could either do it in two steps. So you translate the JSON to XML and then you write an XSLT and then you create a, a translation that goes from the XSLT to MARC, um, or um, since that's there, um, you can start thinking about doing things um, uh, like this, where we uh, add into the function list, um, let's see if I can spell, I can't spell. Uh, uh, where we add into the function list the ability to use um, JSON as starting point language. And then we go ahead and grab an XSLT file that um, we had created earlier. And I'll show you that in a minute because it's super simple. So we get the XSLT file we created earlier. Um, set the original file to JSON. The output file is going to be a mark. We're going to have to use, we can actually use any of the XSLT engine. I'll use the MSX XML one and then explain why in a minute. Um, and save it. And now we've got it there. So um, before I go back, uh, I wrote a very simple XSLT. This is it. Um, essentially, um, it sets a leader, which I would do if I was doing this, I would probably make a little bit more flexible here. Um, this part needs to pull the date, but I didn't do it yet. Um, there's a, we get an identifier, which is essentially the uh, URI. So we're going to go ahead and create a subfield A and subfield O in the 204 or 024. Um, these are all concepts, so they're going to go into a 150. So we go ahead and use the preferred label, which is the text readable string that matches to the data that's being referenced in the 024. Um, and then we have um, broader terms, top level concepts and broader concepts one level up. So really, I'm not sure if you would put those top level concepts in, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in now just to show kind of how you embed those. So we're gonna put those in a 550. The records I'm looking at at the moment, because um, I haven't looked at all of them, but just some samples don't appear to have variants. So there wouldn't be any variant data going into the, to, to the data. And um, the uh, concept in, um, Mark authority records. Uh, I don't believe there's a, a place for um, narrower terms that I could find. Uh, so um, if there are, you could easily adjust the, the thing. So we're talking about a very simple XSLT here. So um, keep that in mind, we could flush it out. So now since we created the process for putting things together, we can go to the tool and we can find the translation we just created. Um, we can find our JSON file and we can save it as a MARC file and go ahead and process the data. And if we go back to here, Um, we can see the data that's translated. And it's very brief. There's not a lot of information inside the JSON record, 
Um, like I said, we could pull some information about dates. In fact, I, I might flesh this out a little more to include in the, oh, what is it? I think it's the, um, in the 008, there's gonna be the date when it was last modified. Um, um, you know, um, there's a, some of these records have note fields. So um, there's, um, if it's present, you put the note information in. So there's a little bit of places you can flesh things out. One thing you will notice is that in the, um, the 550 field, traditionally you would see a subfield A, which would um, use the preferred label of the text. Unfortunately, that's actually a little bit more complicated to do and I haven't decided whether I'm gonna flesh it out just as an example. Um, essentially, you have to use uh, either an embedded script, which in MarkEdit I don't support um, because it's a security risk, um, or you can use XSLT3, in which case you would use the Saxon processor, and you can make use of um, the extensions inside of XSLT. There's an extension that can take JSON and convert it to um, XML. And then you can pass an X path into that converted data to extract an element. So you could, in theory, um, utilize um, some changes to the XSLT spec, um, kind of out on the, the more bleeding edge, to pull data from the process from the file. It's actually unfortunate that the the vocabulary doesn't provide a straight XML um, output. Um, and I did check because uh, I was hoping maybe there was one that if I uh, just said XML, I could get an XML representation. If I could get an XML representation, you can actually in XSLT1 use a, a document extension to pull XML data and then run an X path to pull data directly from it, in which case you could easily expose the data there. So without doing any any kind of extensive work, this would allow you to be able to do that transformation and get um, mark records um, from the uh, the vocabulary there. So so that's that's almost finished now. So you know the 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 process here that I just showed you is downloading. You know I would find the data set that I would want. You know I'd click on the link, I'd save the file. And then I would go and grab the file, but I, I want it to be even slicker than that. So, so Mark Edit has the ability to work with files that are networked. So um, we can do this then in a step. So rather than having to download any data, um, we can go ahead and just copy the link to the. I'll go ahead and grab a different one so that we can see a different, a different file created. So I can go ahead and grab the link to the JSON LD and use that as my source file and tell it I want to output to a file and go ahead and process it. The record gets created. And so we can go over and see the record that gets generated. And what MarkEdit does is it recognizes that the um, input file is a, um, a URL, a networked path, and it goes ahead and goes and gets the data for you um, without having to download it. So now we can do it in one step. If you're cataloging um, and you're doing some, uh, you're using this vocabulary and you wanted to load Mark records into your system, um, you could um, basically copy the URL, paste it into the tool, um, point to um, the uh, this process that's been set. You know, it's, you could create this process that you could set up a translation, um, and then output mark records. Um, like I said, there's probably some work here to be done because I'm, I'm not most most library catalogs aren't going to be super happy with these 550 fields because they're not going to know what to do with them in terms of broader terms. Um, you know, I'll, I'll probably take a look at them a little bit later when it's not, you know, 1.30 in the morning um, and see uh, what it would take to um, uh, translate this to XSLT3 to see if I could, you know, massage that data out easily. There's obviously a, um, 
there's obviously a, a, a performance hit that you're going to take because each one of those represents a network lookup um, in addition to um, the work that's happening inside the XSLT processor because it's going to have to go out and pull the data, translate it to XML, validate the data, and then run the, the Dome X path. Um, I mean, if you're doing this on one record, it's probably not something you would notice. Um, if you were doing it on lots of records at one time, it definitely would. Um, again, like I said, it's unfortunate that the vocabulary doesn't include just a straight XML dump because then it would be really easy in any XSLT version to essentially navigate the path um, uh, without having to, to do other work. But, um, but, you know, it's kind of an interesting it was an interesting question in the sense that, you know, when I first saw it, my first thought was, well, certainly there are ways you could do that now, go about doing that now when the tool existed. And my, like I said, my initial thought was the delimited text translator, which would easily consume the CSV file um, or potentially that that JSON profiler, which was created specifically for this kind of purpose. Um, the problem that I ran into that I run into is the CSV. Um, you know, like I said, CSV has some challenges that would require some post-processing work. Um, and the um, and the JSON LD um, going through the uh, wizard, even if even after the wizard was adjusted to handle JSON LD specifically, um, still wouldn't have worked exactly the way it wanted to, partly because some of the assumption that is, assumptions that I have to make in terms of allowing that, that profiler to work. Um, essentially, files have to be pretty fixed um, structure wise uh, for that to work. So in that case, you really need something like an XSLT or an X query or something that you can generate that allows for a little bit more flexibility in the way that the capture data gets captured. Um, and then once you know you 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 know look at that approach, then it's just really thinking about how you tie those parts together. And in Mark Edit, prior to some of the work that I've been working on tonight, um, the only piece that was really missing there was that ability to, to take exit, to take the JSON data and facilitate that process through to a, a structured XML document that then could be um, processed through either XSLT or XQuery, whichever is your preferred um, processing mechanism. So um, anyways, kind of an interesting, interesting process. Um, like I said, I may flush it or flush flesh this out a little bit more because this was a question on the list. I'm sure somebody will be interested in, in the translation. Um, and so I'll make it available. Um, in terms of, of, you know, how you would make this work and mark edit yourself, there are some pieces of code that have to be changed. They're changed, obviously, on my um, development instance of the application. Um, they will be pushed um, when I update uh, the five the 7.5.x branch, you need to be aware that that's the newest version of Mark Edit. It's the version that's still in beta, um, but it's where, um, where the new work is going. When I can, I'm backporting it back to 7.3 um, until this version comes off of beta, but the problem is the work that was done um, to put all of these components together, build on top of components that were put into market at 7.5. And so um, I'm not quite sure yet how difficult it would be to backport to um, 7.3. So that's the caveat for right now is that um, these changes will primarily be able to be run um, on the new code base that's been created. Uh, but it's um, interesting, interest, it was an interesting question. Um, and I think that um, the process that was created that I was able to create kind of by taking pieces that already existed and just making them, exposing them so that you could use them yourself as building blocks rather than um, having to rely on, um, rather than having them hidden within the application where I use them um, for my own use. Um, uh, hopefully we'll give people additional options beyond this particular question when dealing with either JSON or JSON-LD or, 
or data that's in different formats and potentially provide pathways for folks to, um, again, think about how they get data from one format to another. Anyways, I thought it was interesting. Um, I, like I said, I'll work a little bit more probably on the, the translation because there is a there is a question to be answered on the list. Um, but I thought that folks might find this interesting.